Hello everybody, in this video series I'm going to be showing you how I made this Rubo workbench. Well, that came around quickly, didn't it? The last episode already. How about that? So in this one, all the work that I've done in the previous episodes will be stuck together to make a workbench. But before that point, I've got a few little annoying jobs to do, I suppose. So here, this is the sliding dead man. Now this will be captive in the workbench. I'm not going to be able to remove this or anything like that. I, I know that could be a limitation somewhat, but I decided to make it captive in there so I can't take it out. So Obviously, to get that in, I need to get it in there while I glue the top onto the base. I can't add it afterwards. So to do the sliding dead bump, what I did was get a big bit of wood, cut it in half right down the centre, and then I'm going to replane those surfaces, or re-thickness them, sorry, cut 45 degree on them, stick it together, and that creates a V-groove on the bottom that will slide on the V-point on the front stretcher. So the next little job that needed doing was adding inserts to the underside of the workbench. These inserts are threaded and they allow me to bolt through that stretcher that runs between the front and back legs and bolt that stretcher to the top of the workbench. So that means that it's not only locked in place by the wedge tenon at the front but it's also locking it in place slightly closer to the centre of the workbench and this should help resist the top twisting over time and help keep it all a bit flatter than what it would be if there wasn't something holding it there. So I've just covered these threads in a little bit of candle wax, helps get it in easier. Sitting below the surface, screw them in with an Allen key, and yeah, they ain't going anywhere. And then I sanded down the top, got it all brushed off, I won't bother to show you those boring bits. And then me and Andy dropped it on. And with that all in place, thank God, I could bolt the stretcher to the top of the workbench, get it all locked in place. And if you remember, those holes there that I'm screwing into were elongated. 
So that means that the top is able to expand and contract into that split top in the top of the workbench. And that means that there's going to be no wood restricting it. It's not going to want to buckle the legs out or anything. Everything has got room to move side to side. So that is a strong advantage of the split top. And here, adding the final layer, you can see why I pre-cut those dovetails now, because it just allows me to cut the 45 degree on, slot it all in place and glue it in, ready to go. I was able to see if I was getting that 45 degrees the perfect length because if it was too long you see it starts pushing the end cap away from the end of the workbench so little tiny trims here and there getting the perfect fit at the end of it so there's no gaps whatsoever and from there I work around the workbench getting the remaining five, five yes remaining five sections on and that brings the front of the workbench flush with the legs in the proper Rubo style yes Next job, cutting the wedges for the tenons. This was leftover material from my Krenov cabinet I did earlier on in the year, and I'm going to plug that in the top right corner now. Ding. And yeah, so this was left over from the doors. Perfect width, pretty much, and it's quite a nice grain pattern on it because it's really nice and dark as well, so it gives it a nice rich walnutty colour. And it's quite cool having wood that's sort of linked in that way, so you've got a bit of wood from the same tree in one project that's in another. Maybe I'm just tracking complete rubbish, but I quite like that thought. So yeah, um, just loaded that up with glue, a bit of Type on 3, and smashed them in place. Made sure to get them in at even heights, because if you start tapping them in unevenly, it means that one wedge is going to look slightly bigger than the other one when it's fully bottomed out, or when it's flushed off, sorry. And I didn't really want that, so bottom them out evenly, and yeah, it looks pretty nice now it's all done. And while that was drying, I could then start flushing off the houndstooth dovetails. Now I realise in the last video I said that I would tell you how I filled those little gaps. And I have now realised that I didn't film it. <laughs> so perhaps I thought that I could hide it in the editing stage. I don't really know. But I will share my secrets with you now. Well, they're very secret. Use a water-based glue to glue the dovetails. That will expand the wood somewhat. And then get yourself a little ball pane hammer and hammer the end grain of the walnut. And what that does, you don't do it too much because you will make it look like the kicked bit of meat. <laughs> kicked bit of meat. Um, but don't do it too much. Obviously, if your joint looks like a hobo's two front teeth, then you're not gonna be able to fill all those gaps properly, but water-based glue and a little bit of hammering here and there will help fill out some small hairline gaps here and there. Anyway, metaphors aside, now I'm drilling the holes in the sliding dead man. This, thank God, was nice and thin, so I could just do this with a standard force in a bit, and then put a small chamfer on all of those holes. Before adding that final layer to the front of the workbench, I had to cut the tongue on the top of the sliding dead man ready to be locked in place. So mark that with a mortise gauge, cut it on the table saw and then gave it a quick clean up with a shoulder plane and get it nice and smooth and running freely in there. And with a massive rebate cut on the back of that front layer, did that on the spindle molder, but I'm sorry I forgot to film it. I was rushed for time, all right? I could lock that tongue in place and put the sliding dead man side to side. Yes. 
I then just put a nice heavy chamfer on the inside of that and not entirely sure why I did it, just because I could. And then before gluing that final layer on, I marked a line that was the same depth as the groove that the sliding dead man sits in and plastered loads of wax in there. This helps cut down the friction between the two mating components and allows it to slide proper smooth. By this point, pretty much all that was left to do was clean up. So cutting down the tenons to start with, my good god was that a job. I had to borrow one of the samurai swords from one of my friends. Used a bit of MDF to space it away from the workbench to stop it from scratching it. This isn't a flush cut saw, by the way, it just bends really well. So yeah, cut all those slightly oversized, then take them down with the number seven jointer plane and sand it all flush. Benchcrafted chop hadn't been cut to size at this point either, so cut that to the height of the workbench, cut the 45 degrees on it, leaving a 10 mil flat at the top. This just helps with cutting angles on uh, lap dovetails, for example, where you need to tilt the saw back towards you at 45 degrees. Just gives you that clearance between the workpiece and the chop. So did that, got it all floating in on the crisscross. <laughs> I'd love it without the vise. Got that all threaded in and then added the bolts. There you go, with all of that screwed in place, all bolted up, I could sand it all down, sand all those joints flush, have a quick lie down, apparently. <laughs> this is a very comfortable sanding position, I need to do this more often. But yeah, get it all sanded, took it down to 180 grit at the end of it, didn't think it was worth taking it to 240 because I'm only gonna smack it with a hammer later on. And to finish the workbench, I decided to go for Osmo Hard Wax Oil, more specifically the matte finish, not just because it shares the same name as me, although it was an important consideration. Um, basically, the glossier you go, the more any defects such as dents and nicks show up, so it would be a bit stupid to put that on the workbench. Plus, I hate plasticky looks. But anyway, that's it for the Build Along series. The next one will be an overview of the journey we have taken together on this Rubo workbench. And yeah, see you in that one.